Hey guys, what's up? As usual, my videos are very inconsistent. Sorry. Also, my hair is now its natural color again, and I chopped a lot of length off of it because it was to like here, now it's to here. It might come as a shock to you guys, but bleaching your hair a lot constantly kind of kills it. So I had to cut it off. If I seem less enthusiastic than normal, I actually am incredibly sick. I really, really, really want this series to happen though this month. I really want to continue these videos. So I am so tired of waiting to film this. I am so tired of just keeping every day being like, hopefully I feel better tomorrow and I can do it. So I'm trying really hard to power through it right now. Got a really bad headache though. So it's just really hard to be enthusiastic right now when I feel like something is cracking at my skull. So I apologize. Apologize if I'm less enthusiastic than normal. So today's video, um, obviously we are continuing in the month of September and today we are talking about what snakes are best for beginners. If you've never had a snake before, where do you start basically? And a long time ago I did a video about like the three snakes that I owned and compared them and which one would be easiest to own and I did say ball pythons were the easiest of the three that I had but I'm kind of I'm retracting that statement. <laughs> I'm taking you back. They are, they are good snakes, they're great snakes, but I found with time, there's a lot of snakes that are easier. The main ones being colubrids in general, but king snakes and corn snakes. So this video is dedicated to talking about a few snakes you can look into if you are wanting to get into snakes but don't know where to start, and which snakes are easiest and just comparing them. So I hope you guys enjoy that. I am gonna be doing most of this off camera, like I'm just gonna be filming the snakes and talking because it's really hard for me to sit in front of these lights right now. It's killing me, so, so yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I feel like crap, but I'm trying, okay? <laughs> hey guys, just wanted to say something really quick. Uh, let's stare at cheese while I talk about it so you guys don't get bored, so. So, this video actually ended up being over 45 minutes long. Even when I tried to edit it down, it was just so much because I wanted to talk about corn snakes, I wanted to talk about the other three snakes that I recommend for beginners, and I wanted to talk about colubrids in general, and just, there's so much that goes into it, and honestly, if I put it all into one video, you guys are going to get very, very bored. So I'm gonna be splitting this video up into two parts. This part, this video right now, is just talking about corn snakes and why I think they are great beginner pets. And if you are not satisfied with corn snakes as the answer to your go-to beginner pet, stay tuned for part two where I talk about some other alternatives you can choose from. Okay, thank you. Alright, so the very first ultimate go-to beginner snake is corn snakes. Are corn snakes grammar? Corn snakes are colubrids and they come in a lot of different morphs. You have a lot of color choices if that's important to you. They are, um, They are very quick, very fast moving snakes. These guys are very high energy, they like to move around, they don't really sit still a lot. But you're gonna find that with all colubrids, it's, they're just not very, they don't sit still. The good thing about corn snakes though, is they are a lot more docile and handable, handle, handleable, hand, you can hold them. Like I said, I'm, I, I'm sick, I got a migraine, I don't know English right now. These guys, you can hold without them biting you, being fidgety, scared, musking on you, things like that. You will have pretty high success rate of these guys letting you hold them. What? Why? Does my eye smell good or something? Anyway, these guys are awesome. They normally aren't picky eaters. You can feed them frozen with no issue. They are generally slower growers. They don't grow super fast and they start off really tiny. But it is important to know that they do get large. Of course, not insanely large, but they're not gonna stay tiny. And that's something that's really important to note with pretty much every snake gets a good length. They're not gonna stay tiny, tiny and cute. Kenyan sand boas, burrs, Wow, this whole video is just gonna be me not speaking English correctly. Kenyan sand boas do stay small the longest, I think, out of any snake that I know of, especially males. Since males don't get to a very large, what is he doing? Kenyan sand boas don't get to a very large size, even at their max size, so they stay small incredibly long. I've had my Kenyan sand boa for over a year and he's barely grown at all. You will get some that spontaneously for some reason go through growth spurts very fast, but on average most male Kenyan sand boas do stay small for a very long period of time. Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable? So this is my guy, his name is Lego, because he looks like he has little Lego bricks all over him. I ran into someone in town that was actually looking to rehome him because he apparently bit 
their younger sibling. So of course that is something important to note, that even the most go-to beginner docile snake that will put up with almost anything can bite. Snakes will bite, that's they're animals, okay? You can't, I really don't like when people expect an animal not to act like an animal. Yes, your snake will bite, if you can't handle that, the potential of them maybe one day biting you, don't get one. But I will stress that these non-aggressive species such as corn snakes aren't going to bite much of ever if they do. But it's still a potential, it's still possible. Just like if you get a cat, it can scratch you. These guys can bite. They don't have hands, they don't have any way to defend themselves other than their mouth. So if for some reason they do feel scared, that's all they can do to protect themselves. So they aren't trying to be mean and vicious, it's just literally all they can do to protect themselves. Since this is a male, he's not going to get as big as females get. Wiggle, wiggle. Their setups are very simple too. It's very minimal. It's all very easy. Like I said, go to beginner snake. If you're looking for something that's just gonna get, you know, get your feet wet, or if you just want something in general that's easy and still fun, these guys are it. Not to mention, they look adorable as babies because they are tiny worms. Alright, so a little info about these guys before I put them away. Now, corn snakes are also known as the red rat snake because they are a species of rat snake. These guys are found in the southeastern region of the U.S., but as pets, they're found all over. <laughs> they actually are commonly found in gardens and around people's houses. These guys also in the wild are known to eat lizards and birds on top of eating small rodents, but in captivity, we normally just stick to small rodents. It definitely does not hurt, though, if you want to switch up their diet every once in a while and give them frozen thawed chicks, but usually we just stick to rodents just to not cause complications and make them get picky maybe about their diet. Now these guys are not arboreal species, but they are known in the wild to climb trees. So if you do want to add some things for them to explore in their cage, it definitely won't hurt. They will use it sometimes to explore and look around. Their average length as an adult is around three feet, but they can get up to four and five feet, but not very commonly. Now, of course, females are much more likely to get bigger, while males will max out sometimes at two and a half to three feet. These guys are seasonal breeders. They uh, mate in the spring and lay eggs in early summer. Now, these snakes are egg layers, and they will lay up to 30 eggs in one go. So these are actually the most popular pet snake. People normally think of ball pythons when you think of the most popular pet snake, but these guys take the cake, and it's not without reason. These guys make amazing pets, rarely have health problems if you take care of them right, and they are just super chill, easygoing. Like I said, uh, they will move more so than other kinds of snakes. Ball pythons, for example, are just gonna sit there 90% of the time. These guys are going to be moving 90% of the time. So. They're very interested in everything going on. They love to explore. And in my opinion, they are pretty much always sweethearts. I love these guys, they're awesome, and I would love to explore different kinds of rat snakes in the future to own. Their care is relatively a piece of cake, but I'll run you through it anyway. Now, a corn snake that is in really good health and cared for really well will live anywhere from 14 to 20 years. So again, please make sure you're ready to have one of these for a good amount of time. Do not get one of these for your little kid that's, you know, 10 years old because you think, you know, they want a snake, they like snakes, and you think they're gonna take care of it, please don't do that. If you're gonna get a snake for your kid, understand it's your pet that you're taking care of for them to enjoy. It's not, it's not up to them to take care of. It's really good to teach responsibility, yes, but do not do that to the animal. Teach them responsibility, but also make sure that they're cared for, please. Quick little disclaimer. Now, when it comes to where they need to be kept and housed and what their care is, it's actually extremely versatile. They can be kept in plastic tubs, they can be kept in vivariums, and they can be kept in glass cages. Adore Adort? Adort! Adort corn snakes. Adult corn snakes need at least 20 gallon long enclosures, but the bigger the better. Do not house more than one together, male or female, doesn't matter. One snake per cage, thank you. Snakes are not social animals. Housing them together does nothing but stress them out, okay? It's not, they don't need it. Now all snakes are escape artists. They are curious, they wanna know what's up there, they mess around, they get out. But colubrids in particular are extremely good at this. So please make sure no matter what you put them in that the lid is super secure, that there's locks on the side. Make sure they can't get out because if there's any chance they could, even if it's a tiny little gap, they will do it and you will lose your snake. And snakes do not make it easy to find them. Like I said, they are not arboreal, but they do like to climb a little bit. And in the wild, they are known to scale some trees 
to get to some prey. If you give them some branches, they will appreciate it. If you give them some things to, you know, climb in instead of just a completely flat surface, they will appreciate it. But also please make sure they have space to burrow because they do like to burrow underneath the aspen when it's time to shed and when it's time to just feel safe and secure. At least two hides per cage, one on the cool side and one on the warm side. When it comes to heating, they need a heating pad or heat tape. They like to get heat from their belly, so please give them the chance to get some belly heat. Do not get a heat rock, those are awful. Heat rocks don't disperse heat evenly. So snakes will sit on it just to try to get warm, but it'll only warm like one little patch of them and then they'll end up burning themselves. So please get something that's going to distribute the heat evenly like heat tape or a heating pad. These guys do not need any special kind of lighting, but that does not mean you could put them in front of a window. Do not ever put a snake in front of a window for natural light because you can't control the heat of the sun, okay? And that heat, can end up killing your snake. So please only do heat you can regulate, like a heating pad or heating tape, I will reiterate. I will stress also that heating mats can sometimes go haywire and not, not work right and emit too much heat or not enough. So getting a thermometer and something that can monitor the heat of the heating pad is extremely important. The heated area should reach about 85 degrees while the rest of the tank can be mid to low 70s. Now these guys don't need their enclosure actively misted down, but when it comes time for a snake to shed, Increased humidity can definitely help them get their shed off and it won't stick to them as much. So I do actually recommend to have a humid hide in their enclosure, which is just a bonus hide that has some added humidity to it. Basically the humid hide can have some wet moss in it and they can go in there whenever it's time to shed, get rid of their shed and then leave. So they don't have to always be in the humid environment, but if they need to, they can go into it. My favorite substrate for corn snakes is aspen bedding. Just make sure it's deep enough for them to bury themselves in. Now corn snakes do actively eat frozen food, but one thing about baby newborn snakes is when they are first learning how to exist in life and you're throwing them into a home that they're not aware of and you know, they're scared, they're stressed, they often won't recognize frozen food as food. So when you bring your new snake home, don't even try to feed it for at least a week, if not two. And for those first two weeks, don't really mess with it. You could take a picture of it, of course, you can look at it, you can acknowledge it exists so people, you know, share pictures of it, whatever. But after that, especially if it's a really small baby, leave it alone. Let it get used to being in a new place because that's scary for them. Snakes don't recognize humans as, you know, safe. They don't recognize you as a safe owner and caretaker. They don't know what you're going to do to them. So you need to allow them to get comfortable with their environment and recognize that they are safe. During this stressful time, they might need a live newborn mouse as a baby, but please try your best to switch to frozen or start with frozen. This is not because I don't want the poor little mouse to get eaten, okay? I don't, that's not where this is coming from. This is coming from the safety of your snake. People don't understand that mice and rats will bite back. They will hurt you. They will attack the snake if they have to because they don't want to die. So if a snake bites them and doesn't immediately kill them, the rat can turn around, bite the snake, leave puncture wounds, infect the snake, you know, get a bacterial infection, kill the snake. Rats can kill your snake. It is incredibly so much safer for the snake to just give them frozen food. I'm not gonna go super in depth about that right now. I will do another video about eating your snakes. I do have one previous one out there, but for this month, I'm gonna try to do some more informative, more in depth videos. They do need a water dish with conditioned water. I always put moderately warm water, of course not really hot, but not freezing cold water either. And the dish needs to be big enough for them to put their whole body in it and soak in it and the water does not splash out when they sit in it. So the bowl needs to be able to handle all the water and the snake. Okay, that's actually where I left off for this video. The next part I go into talking about all the other snakes that I'm going to mention, so we're just gonna cut it here. They're super cute. I think they make amazing beginner pets, and I hope you guys learned something, and I will be talking a lot more about other beginner snakes come the next part of this video, so thank you guys for watching. I didn't film an outro because originally I planned this all to be one video, so Lego, say goodbye. I guess that counts. Goodbye. Subscribe. Thank you. Wiggle, wiggle. <gasps>